Hello and welcome back and thank you for tuning in. Uh, welcome back to a another lovely live broadcast of the Tuesday Fields Drawing Group with Ricardo Certivant. This is a live stream started on August 9th at 10 a.m. East Coast time. Um, I'll be your host for today. My name is Jason Leeser. If this is working for you, please let us know in the comments. Um, and welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community, where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are encouraged to join in these live streams, real-world events to share and inspire and ultimately create better art and tattoos together. We beam out nearly every day and with your help have evolved into a quality network of amazing live and on-demand tattoo and art shows that have all been receiving rave reviews. You can find us on both the app stores, the Apple App Store and Google Play Store, as well as our YouTube channel, our Facebook page. You can catch all of our replays on our Roku channel, reinventingthetattoo.com slash Roku, or you can listen to our podcast our, our podcast in all of the usual places, such as Apple and Spotify. As always, you can get the latest event schedule, all of the notifications so you don't miss your favorite shows, um, as well as access to the Reinventing 24-7 channel, which is a 24-hour a day, seven day a week live replay of some of your favorite shows, all available at www.reinventingthetattoo.com which actually links out to everywhere. So it's pretty nice to know. Once again, if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments and in the chat um, and tag a friend who loves tattoos. You know, maybe it's a client, a coworker, a fellow tattoo enthusiast, you know, whoever. Tag your friends, get, help us get the word out. We have a number of weekly staple shows that we always encourage people to tune into starting on Sundays at 1 p.m. with me, Jason Leeser for the Skill Building Sunday Drawing Group. And that's followed on Mondays at 9 a.m. with Drawing for Tattooers with James Wisdom, where we discuss basic drawing techniques and strategies. 11 a.m., we have the Tattoo Weekly hosted by Lauren Gregory, Jake Meeks, and Gabe Ripley. And that's followed on Mondays at 5 p.m. with Let's Talk About Feelings with Robbie Rapol. Um, and that's followed on Monday evenings at 9 p.m with a live subscribers exclusive drawing group with Guy Aitchison himself. Um, that's followed on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. with Ricardo Certivant. Wednesdays at 1 p.m. we have the Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley. And Thursdays at 6 p.m. we have the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast. We'd like to go through and take a minute to thank some of our sponsors and some of the people that make this show happen. Starting with Raw Pigments, an ink company that's tapping into the source, rawpigments.co. These are powder-based, acrylic-free, vegan-friendly. Uh, they are absolutely phenomenal. I've started using almost nothing but Raw Pigments in my lineup. They saturate the skin super easily. They stay nice and vib vibrant. Um, you know, they are absolutely wonderful. I highly recommend them. Um, so yeah, give them a shot. And next we have worldtattooevents.com. Uh, the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events worldwide. As we know in this post pandemic world, there are still tattoo conventions and events that are getting rescheduled like crazy. So if you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest tattoo event information, take a look at worldtattooevents.com. Delize Pro in the U.S., also known as Dermalize in the rest of the world, protect your art. If you're still using plastic wrap to wrap your tattoos after you're done with them, maybe it's time to step your game up. Delize Pro is designed by wound care specialists and specifically designed to help heal tattoos. Take a look at Delize Pro. TattooNow.com, technology for tattooers. The leading edge in SEO and professional development for tattooers of all levels, and they are now accepting new clients. So if you're really looking to start attracting the clientele that you really want to tattoo, Tattoo Now is how to go about doing that. Um, they will help drive business that you are looking to do towards 
your business um, and they will really help you get to that level that you want to get to. And of course, this wouldn't be reinventing the tattoo without a very special personal and professional thank you to Guy Aitchison, who you can find at GuyAitchison.com. He is the founder and inspiration behind reinventing the tattoo. Go to GuyAitchison.com where you can pick up a copy of his Biomech Encyclopedia, some of his DVDs. He's got some custom coil machines, some original oil paintings and prints all available at GuyAitchison.com. Would also like to go through and give a real quick shout out to two of our affiliates, the Apprenticeship Diaries with Amy Nichols and the Fireside Tattoo Network with Jake Meeks. Uh, as always, we always ask that you please go through and post some positive reviews on our channel and help us get the word out. If you're ever interested in hosting a Reinventing the Tattoo event, or you want to become a sponsor of the community, or maybe you're looking for a tattoo or fine art critique, please email management at reinventingthetattoo.com. And welcome to the show. I'm going to go through and unmute everyone. Uh, do, 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 do. Hello, hello. There you are. Hello, everyone. Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, everybody. Guys? Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm beaming I'm in today from the road, so I'm usually in your spot, Jason, but you did that beautifully. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I've had a little bit of practice. I think I'm at 83 shows and going. 83? I, I think so. Yep, so this is episode 53, 54? This is episode 56. 56? 5-6. Yep. He's the big 5-6. Five, five, Great. <laughs> I'm getting there. 45 this year. We've got uh, Ali on the YouTube saying good morning, everyone. And Kyle Olson's beaming in. Good morning. Good morning, good morning everybody. Oh, I forgot to play. So, Lauren, you're on the road. What's going on? I am on the road. I'm going to get tattooed. I'm heading to hyperspace today, so. Jason pulled through with the home-based uh, computer setup. I'm on beaming in from my laptop, literally on the road. Nice. Yep. Uh, so this will be my first time to hyperspace. Uh, I did get a new camera last week, so I'm excited to take, you know, some photos. But overall, really, the um, real experience will be the tattoo, which I'll share with you guys. Yeah, let's check that out. Yep. Not now, but. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I think I think it's absolutely incredible that you are driving and paying attention to the broadcast as well right now. I think that's I'm not that's driving. Awesome. Come on, I'm not. Well, I'm sure, I don't know that. <laughs> I would be like the this. viewers don't know that. You have a co-pilot. Yep. I, I, I thought she that. was using her telepathic abilities to drive. Yeah. Or, so um last last weekend also I was in San Diego. And I was going to talk to you guys about that. That was a really cool experience for the first Bill and Art show out there. Yeah. Yeah. How was it? Uh, it was pretty good, actually. The venue itself probably set the mood better than most. Uh, it was a very easy in and out. Downtown San Diego, like right next to the gas lamp district. So you had, I mean, a really good turnout of artists. But usually with West Coast shows, a lot of those you know, East Coast or Midwest guys, they don't tend to get out there as often, mainly because I think, and I've thought about this, maybe it's because <clears throat> we trust that Bill and Arts will have all of the health department. We, we know we've dealt with them long enough to know that they'll have their everything organized when we get out there. So pretty good turnout from people that weren't from California as well. A lot of. Yeah, that's definitely a show I'm, I'm looking into doing next year. Um, if all goes well, I'd really, really love to uh, to sign up for that one next year. I mean, I, I will say this. Villain Arts runs one heck of a smooth, sh smooth show. They've been doing tattoo conventions for so long. They've got it down to a science and an art. Um, they know exactly how to do load in. They know exactly how to do um, pipe and drape. They know 
they know all of the back end of running a tattoo convention and they know how to do it really smoothly. They've got a great team of guys that are on there that um, really help organize it well. Uh, highly, highly recommend the villain art shows. I mean, I, I really like them, but then again, I, I do have a big bias for villain arts because villain arts is based out of Philadelphia, Philadelphia. and I'm from Philadelphia. So I, yeah, I've got a bias again, like for it, because that's well, what I grew up knowing. a huge thing when you're talking about conventions. Yeah. But these guys, I mean, when you're talking about conventions with, with health departments, especially in California in particular, I would say there's a lot of places that have health departments, but California is very particular. You want to have everything as smooth as possible and as organized as possible. So that one, that was fine. And when you're saying that, you mean stuff like, uh, you know, your bloodborne pathogen certs and stuff like that, and anything that they require to show sterilization and everything. Yeah. And all, all your gear. Yeah, tell us a little bit more. Did, were you just in San Diego? Who did you really enjoy seeing while you were out there? Actually, I think she hit a dead zone. It's a possibility. Yeah. So how about you, Ricardo? How have you been? I've been doing pretty good, man. I've been um, trying to stay busy. Uh, I've been working on more drawings that uh, of stuff that I want to do. Here, I'll share this with you guys. I hope you can see it. Uh, I'm starting to work on another flower piece. This time I'm incorporating another subject matter. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Ooh, or not. I like that. Yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. man. I really like yeah. that, dude. Thank you very great much. Great composition, great flow. It's not super busy. Very easy to read. Yep. Hell Again, yeah, dude. I'm trying to implement some of the stuff that we've learned in guys' drawing classes, you know what I mean? Some of that positive right. negative relationship, some of the uh, long gradients and things like that. Um, trying to focus on priority, you know what I mean? Um, so it's all there. Uh, the snake. And flowers. I've been really getting into this stuff lately. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. So I pretty much have found some gaps and stuff like that in my schedule. Um, so I'm trying to create these drawings of things that I'd like to fill my time with, uh, get paid, and also try to show people the things that I really want to do. You know what I mean? I think if I put a little bit more emphasis on that kind of work, then it'll definitely bring in more of that it'll generate more of that buzz for that type of work you know oh absolutely and what we post up that we want to do that's what we end up attracting right so if yep. we want to do more black and gray portraiture we post up more black and gray portraiture we want to do more neo trad bold color <clears throat> stuff that's what we post a lot more of because what people see that we do is what's going to attract them to us yep it's a Jedi mind trick. Yeah, man. Sorry. I'm sorry. My phone's cutting out. Hang on one second. Oh, no. I'll be right. Hang on. Don't leave me all alone, screen. Ricardo. Don't leave me. There's plenty of room on the door for you. <laughs> oh, wait. Shoot. Hang on. So you guys can just sit here and watch me eat delicious cereal and berries. Mm. All right, there we are. I'm here and back. Yay. Good, because I'm going to turn off my video while I scurf this breakfast. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just, you just won't be able to watch me eat. Okay, dokie. Uh, Ali Kriska. In the comments on YouTube said, nice, Ricardo. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, Nine to business. What's up, guys? How's it going, man? Um, what's up? What's up? What's up? Uh, let's see. Yesterday was a pretty interesting day for me. I worked on this guy's um, forearms. Um, and we did this little, this little circular, this real simple little circular and sun pattern design. It's very uh, folk, like native folk kind of looking. A lot of fun, man. You know what I mean? Like he was really nervous and he seemed really shaky. It was pretty crazy. And I ended up talking to him for a little while. And, you know, a bedside manner goes a long way. 
You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, I'm really big advocate of it. It actually turned the tempo around quite a bit whenever we did start communicating and talking a little bit more about that stuff. So that was pretty cool. Um, we started talking yeah, about one of my life and stuff like that. Well, that's that's a very, very good, very big point that you brought up, man, because it was brought up to me by one of my clients the other day. Um, they reminded me that, you know, tattoo studios can be a bit intimidating yeah. for clients when they walk in. Yeah. You know, they don't always have the best, you know, reputation or whatever. And I mean, if you look at the stereotypes based off of the past 40 years, like they were pretty rough and tumble places to be. So, like, having a welcoming atmosphere really can go a really long way. Yeah. It does, man. You know, I think we, we've talked about this before, and I'll kind of lightly touch on it again. But, like, it's um, it's important for us as the tattoo artist to remember that this is our everyday life. You know what I mean? This is our everyday. We, uh, we deal with these kinds of things, and we get kind of um, – what's the right way to say it? desensitized to the atmosphere and a lot of times it's it's really good to check yourself and remember that that's not the case for everybody that's walking in through the door and definitely don't have an attitude with people whenever they walk in the door like what are you doing here i don't know about you man but i get that quite a bit and and some other tattoo shops for sure kind of treat you like what are you doing here you shouldn't even be in here you know what i mean it's like what dude yeah, I remember I was um, I flew down to Florida to visit my parents one year, um, hang out with them for the holidays. And there's a couple of tattoo studios <clears throat> right around where they have like a little condo on the east coast of Florida. And I remember I, I walked in and I didn't really say anything. I was just kind of there getting a general idea for the vibe and like what it was like. Was it busy? How, you know, what was going on? And you know, trying to network a little bit, you know, maybe if, you know, whoever had it in their mind that, you know, they could try to get me in the chair. It's like, yeah, let's, let's see what kind of game you got. Um, and, uh, no one even talked to me. Yeah. I was in there for like a solid 10, 15 minutes. No one said a word. Mm-hmm. And so That's I looked, I looked through a few portfolios and left. Yep. Yep. Wanted to get they, could made, wanted... they could have made good money, mm-hmm. but you know, yeah, so some... I, Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, I think customer service and uh, bedside manner is really everything, dude. Well, it not really everything. Is, everything but... It's a large part of it though. You know what I mean? Like we can't forget about that stuff. You know, the other thing I've been thinking about too, Jason is, um, Let's see. What's the right word to say? It's uh, damn it. I had it right on the two more times. Like finalization in your art. Um, getting that closure, like a closure in art. How about that? A closure okay. in your piece in your piece of art. You know what I mean? Like, what do you think are some of the more important parts? Because I think us as artists, we all struggle with like, when is this finished? You know what I mean? And how do we finish it off? Um, do you ever find yourself kind of? wondering what the hell it needs sometimes and not feeling like it's it's quite done but you don't know where to go with it next all the time me too with every single painting i've ever done in my life even ones Mm -hmm. that i have framed hanging up Mm -hmm. i would love to take them out and work on them again (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. just like maybe tweak one thing just a tiny bit or like change a subtle hue here or there i would Mm -hmm. love to do that but you have to get to a point where it's like, okay, this is done to such an extent and now it's time for me to move on. Right. You know, for me, that point is whenever I sign something, it's like, okay, even though this might not be done in my eyes, I need to move on. Mm -hmm. So like I, that mom that I've been painting for the past few weeks. So like I signed it and gave it like a little title the other day. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to throw this in a frame. Yeah, there's tons of other stuff I would love to do to this. Let's there's a lot of again. things I would love to tweet. Uh, Can I see it again one more time? Yeah, yeah. I'm just throwing on a different camera. There you go. So what things would you like to tweak on that? Because that looks pretty good to me. 
oh, it looks good, but like there's a couple of tiny little things. Like I'd love to blend this corner out a little bit more. Um, you know, I'd like to give it a little bit more contrast in the background in some of these areas. Uh, go through and kind of really work on some of where the light source would be hitting, give it a little bit more of a dynamic light source, maybe some of these tiny little folds here, here, uh, over here could be a little bit more dramatic with a little bit more contrast. Like there's tons of stuff I would love to just tweak, just little bits here or there, just to really push it to another, you know, really try to push it. Mm -hmm. but I'm done. I have to walk away from this one now because I've learned that after so much time, when I get to that point where I just want to start tweaking little things that are mm -hmm. already done that already look good, but I just want to try to make them look a little bit better. Yeah. That to me is usually my dead giveaway for when I need to stop working. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, it's almost like uh, if you put too much, too many little things in it, it's just going to take away from the overall piece. Exactly. Yeah. That's a good indicator. I'd say that's a good way to like pay attention to that. Yeah. And that's awesome. That and typically speaking, I work almost in reverse because I'm working on paper with uh, liquid acrylics. So I'll start out with a lot of lighter tones first and then end up working my way darker. Uh -huh. um, kind of the opposite of tattooing where you start with, you know, typically speaking that the way it was always done was black outlines, black shading. Then you do your cooler, darker colors, work your way up to your lighter, warmer colors, and then you do white last. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But when, when you're working with this kind of a medium, you have to almost work in the complete opposite because anything that you put down that's light can very easily be covered up by something that's very dark, mm -hmm. right? So I always save my black lines for last. And it's something I'm starting to do more with tattooing now. Um, and I start with lighter tones and light washes to block stuff in and kind of go through and refine things as I'm working through them. But I always start lighter and then work darker. So. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's kind of counterintuitive, but it works well for this kind of a medium. But that's one thing I've learned on how I know when it's time to stop. Because mm -hmm. to me, I can work on the same painting for decades. I, I can always find something a little bit more to do. Yeah, for sure, man. You know, one of the things that I've learned that I do for myself is um, I'll hold my hand over portions of the design. You know what I mean? And I try to see, like, if it looks finished without the top portion or the, uh, the top half or the bottom half or the top third or the, the middle third or the bottom third, if it looks finished when I'm holding my hand against it in the middle of the design and then the top of the design, the bottom of the design, then I think that I've accomplished what it is I'm trying to do. That makes sense to you? That's a genius way of looking at it. I've never it's, thought about doing that. You know, like it, it's kind of blocking off what it is that uh, you might be not seen as a whole, you know, or what you can't take in as a whole. You know, right? You you block it all off and stuff like that, and of course the rule of thirds. You know what I mean? So yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Um, yeah, I think that's that's been pretty helpful for me lately. Um, but I've been forgetting to rely on those things. That's the part of it that's um, mm. been causing me so much frustration and pain lately. Has been just relying on those gut instincts and those gut, uh, or not even just gut, but just like. The foundational part of it you know what i mean so yeah it looks like uh amber said i have to make myself stop so i don't go overboard and totally mess up the piece yeah that's exactly it i was listening to a uh, a fine art painting podcast not too long ago um and they were actually addressing this this actual question um and it was a number of people that have gone to a lot of very high-end you know art schools um, that were commission gallery artists and illustrators. These were people that are, you know, they're really pushing the bounds of what's being done and they're making a living off of selling art. And um, the whole topic of the podcast, and I think it was a 40 minute podcast or something like that, 
was when is a work of art finished? Oh, okay. you know, just like what you were saying, when is it done? Mm -hmm. And one thing that they said on this podcast was that it actually takes two people to make any painting. That's interesting. Go on. One artist to start it and to work on it and use their creative abilities to go through and create the painting. And the second person to sit back and tell that first person when to stop. Wow. Because we all have the tendency being creative minded people. We all have the tendency to go through and overwork what it is we're working on. And if we put too much time, too much effort, too much energy, if we tweak things too much or we overwork such and such an area too many times, it's actually detrimental, right? Yeah. You know, if you're, if you're working on globs and globs and globs and globs and globs of paint, it, you're not really going to be able to layer paint over top of that and have that same kind of a look. Yeah. So it, it's nice to have someone sit back and say, listen, don't touch that again. <laughs> Sign it and put it aside. Yeah, for sure, dude. If you take a year of looking at it, but don't touch it. Don't touch it, man. Don't touch it. No. Don't go through and mess up what you already did because that shit looks pretty good, bro. Right. And that's yeah. that's kind of what I've I've started taking that approach a little bit more. If I'm done with a painting or I think I'm done with a painting, I'll go through and I'll set it down and I'll put it aside. And I'll give it a month or two. I won't look at it. I won't think about it. Assuming that I remember where I put it, which is always up for debate. And I'm right. finding artwork that I haven't seen in years popping randomly out of like books and like in folders and stuff like that. It's like, oh man, I haven't seen this in like three years. Mm -hmm. I was wondering where this got to. But um, yeah. you put it aside, take a look at it later on, give it a month or two, find out, you know, and revisit it. Uh -huh. See if what you originally, maybe put a post-it note on it and be like, hey, think I might tweak this out, might look at that, might make this brighter or darker or more saturated with color or whatever. You know, does this still need this? And then put it away. Then when you find it or you pull it back out again, you have those notes on there where you can turn around and you can say, no, you know what? Looking at this again with fresh eyes, I don't think it needs, you know, a brighter highlight here or a color tweak there or maybe a more definitive edge on this area. Um, I always like to leave myself little notes like that because I just I'm I forget everything. So if I don't do that. I'm that's never going to remember it. Yeah, that's a good way to do it. You know, it's just kind of like whenever you have a client, and you have a certain wash that you like if you're not using a premix wash. You know, you got to remember how many drops you put in for the piece that you're working on. So it's almost the same thing. I do that quite a bit in the calendar. Like I'll, uh, if I'm making my own premix wash, I'll definitely make sure and put like, you know, I put five drops of black versus, you know, so much witch hazel and stuff like that in a, in a cap. Does that make sense? It does. What I used to do is carry around a tiny little notebook. Uh-huh. Something like this, you know, tiny little, you know, moleskin notebook doesn't have to be lined, but, um, you know, just something with like a couple of pages in it. And for the projects that I was working on, I used to go through and have a page for each individual project. Someone would come in for a consultation. Cool. Um, I would, I always take my notes digitally for consultations that way. I know that nothing's going to happen to them and I'm not going to lose them because uh, they're in the cloud. Ooh. Um, but what I will do before I get started with the tattoo or even after the tattoo is I'll, I'll jot down some notes on what it is I use. You know, did I use um, canary yellow or lightning yellow or bumblebee or, um, you know, bright yellow 
what, what did I use? You know, I'll write down the colors I used. Um, I switched over to using premixed gray wash, which I really like for consistency's sake. Um, so I switched over to using that, which I find is really helpful, but I'll write that down. Yeah, did I do my sure. own drop system? Did I do, did I use this black or that black? Um, so it's something that, you know, take the time. It takes 30 seconds to jot down notes of what you use. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Pretty cool, man. It's a good way to stay organized. That's for sure. Definitely need yeah. to work on that. Organizing motivation. You know what I mean? Yeah, I find organization for me is the biggest thing that I work on. I've got the motivation. I've got, you know, the the tools that I need. I've got everything I need. I just sometimes can't remember where I put my lists of what I was using, right? That's my biggest problem is like, okay, where did I put this? What did I do with that? What did I use on this? Just or keeping those thoughts organized. That's mm-hmm. always been my issue. Well, at least I think that's my issue. I probably have a lot of different issues. In fact, I know I do. We all got shoes. We put them at the door and then we forget about them until we have to put them back on again. I like that philosophy. Yeah. But, yeah, that was a, yeah, that's pretty funny. Anyways. So, so let me ask you this. What kind of prompted your, um, your inspiration to get started working on this more of a floral motif? Trying to find some beauty in things these days, man. Trying to find some beauty in things these days. I think they can be pretty expressive. Um, I think they're they're gorgeous to look at. <clears throat> and um, it's really easy to take it all in, you know? And I think that uh, I like the, sim- the symbolism behind them. A lot of them have specifically their own their own symbolism, you know, as far as the type of flower that they are. Uh, but I think overall, just the floral motif for me is I'm looking for some beauty in things these days. Um, I'm having a real hard time finding a lot of that for myself uh, the past few months. So I'm trying to invite that in in some kind of uh, energy, you know, some kind of creation. We are creators of our own reality. Uh, the things we think the things we feel become our reality when we allow them to be. Um, so I've found, yeah, I'm just gravitated towards trying to make something beautiful right now. You know, I don't, I've, uh, in the past, when I've been in the position that I am, I'm, I'm drawn towards like, you know, the more gnarly things like severed heads and like, you know what I mean? Like um, just gnarly mean things, mad faces and mean skulls and stuff like that, which skulls, and I'm not just saying the skull as in the anatomical skull. I mean, like, a you know, one that's like all pissed or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, I'm realizing looking through some of my old sketches where I was at the time, and some of them were drawn out of like some kind of uh, emotion for sure. So a lot of them were like anger. And right now I think that it's beautiful that flowers can come up. They look so beautiful. They help, you know, pollinate the earth in a symbiotic kind of way with bees and things like that. You know what I mean? And um, they give out so much from such a small thing. Uh, so, and then they die briefly, you know what I mean? But their life is full of fucking beauty the whole time. So yeah. long answer to that question, I'm trying to find some beauty in my life right now. And I'm trying oh, yeah, to, re- I'm trying to reinstill it. You know what I mean? So and I've had a lot of positive effects uh, through the DMs and stuff like that by posting them, by doing them. Um, and I switched gears pretty quick on the way that I'm going to do them. I was we're still relying heavily on a lot of line work and stuff like that with the first one that I put out. Um, and I'm going to start gravitating more towards this tonal value. Um, I'm going to start implementing some color in some of them too. So I think that'll be fun as well. Um but, uh, you know, we can take any black and gray sketch and start implementing color into it no matter what, though. So, yeah, that's, that's the answer there. I'd like there. to see you start doing more like subtle colors, like light peaches, mm-hmm. maybe throw some pale yellows in there. Just doing very, very subtle tonal color schemes. 
you know, maybe throw like a very, very light pale blue wash behind it. Right. That's exactly just bringing out some of those like warmer tones that you see with natural light on flowers. Yeah, for sure. You know, and it, it, it helps give it like a more of a, like a vintage kind of look when you do stuff like that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, and I'm still, and I'm still the whole time though, that I'm doing all this philosophical stuff with my artwork right now. And this, this exploratory stuff with my artwork and with intent. Now I, I look back on my drawings and I see that there wasn't any real intention. There was just that, that moment that I put it down and there's, there's a beauty in that for sure. You know what I mean? But I think this is helping me give, give me a little bit more purpose again and like a little bit more focus and stuff like that, you know, and a little bit more determination. Um, so the intent outside of just the subject matter is also been how to make this a legible tattoo and how to make it a um, long lasting tattoo as well. You know what I mean? Something that can stand uh, the test of being weathered by being worn by a person. So those colors you're talking about are definitely things that I'm taking into consideration and how to make them foundational, you know, without a lot of line work uh, by implementing, you know, starker contrast backgrounds and stuff like that. And using the uh, intensity values that we've been learning about a lot with Guy, you know what I mean? So uh, the past two years, year and a half or so drawing with Guy every Monday night has been um, super informative and it's uh, helping me out and it's helping me out through this process too so that's pretty good yeah that's uh, um so i brought up something um on sunday during my little show um on artwork archive on instagram highly recommend you check it out by the way if you don't already take a look uh okay. it's a page for fine artists for painters for gallery artists and whatnot but they've got some great information on there and you touched on a couple of things that I remembered seeing in one of their posts called um, the post is five questions. Your artist statement should answer. Yeah. Right. Because sooner or later, we're all going to have people that ask us questions about the work that we do. You know, what, what drove us to paint this chrysanthemum with this open circle in the background, right? What drove us to draw these magnolias? Um, you know, what was your intention behind it? You know, why did you do it? Yeah, so be prepared to tell people like, you know, a story about why did you draw these magnolias? You know, why did you draw these chrysanthemums or peony flowers or um, roses or, you know, whatever, daffodils, tulips? Um, why, you know, what drew you to that? You know, for me, I, I tend to draw a lot of chrysanthemums because I love their complexity yeah. and how you've got all of these differing points of these very, very long petals on this flower, but they all converge into one central area, right? Mm -hmm. You can draw a ton of meaning from that. Take, take life, for example, you've got all of these different areas. You've got all of these different people in your life and they're each a petal, Right but they all come back to one central area and that's yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so Absolutely. it's from one, you have many, but from many, you have one. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, man. That's pretty cool. Like that's exactly the symbolism I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Right now it hasn't been too much for me for the, um, for the actual flower itself right now. It's just the floral arrangement and like the subject matter you know what i mean so and i think i'm gonna start getting pretty funky with it and start throwing some things like the snake and the flowers is something that you always see so i'm just trying to like warm my feet up with it you know what i mean like kind of warm the hands up and um the subject matter as far as the ideas warm that, that whole situ situation up and, and, and arrangement but i think i'm gonna start messing around with some like uh, unorthodox kind of um subject matter with it you know what i mean um, do some different do, do some different things um, that I can implement in there with it uh, and see what happens cool. you know? yeah are you looking at more domestic flowers are you looking more exotic just anything a anything any flowers right now yeah there's no 
there's only one flower that I'm really drawn to right now. It's just beauty. <laughs> right on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll definitely do some skulls or some flowers and stuff like that too, of course, because I love skulls and everything. But um, yeah, you know, throwing some animals and stuff like that in there, in there with it, you know, some wolves and stuff like that. Um, some spiders. Maybe, maybe a wolf in, in the forest. Hey, there with you blue go. Blue eyes. There, yeah, with blue eyes, exactly. And names in each one of the feather or each one of the hairs for all the mm. grandkids and kids, please. <laughs> well, I thought we were going to do each one of the branches of the silhouette trees as names. <laughs> yeah, it'd be interesting to find out from you guys in the audience uh, what you guys think about um, this idea and what you what you've been focusing on lately. Uh, Ger Gerardo says, good morning, everyone. Hello, Gerardo. Yeah, that's always funny when you have to explain that to people, dude, about the um, about the names and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like, I get it, dude. I really get it. And then when other people are like, I just want to hide it in there. Just like, I want to hide it in there. It's like, you know, man, you're going to do it. Why are you going to hide it? Just put it out there, bro. If you're going to do the name, just do the name. You know what I mean? If you want to put initials in there, put initials in there. But don't. Yeah, exactly. Why be subtle with it? But each their own you know what i mean you can give them the you can give them the point you can tell them how you feel about it why you feel about it and then ultimately it's them the tattooed person that gets the uh end all be all choice unless you know for a fact it's like something bad you know what i mean yeah some gang stuff or some racial stuff and it's like no negative negatory negatory <laughs> good buddy but yeah man other than that, I, I will be picking your brain, though, pretty soon about some uh, tattoo conventions coming up. Um, I'd like to maybe get on, on the back on the travel list with you again, man. I think it's time for me to uh, start getting out of this, this mode that I've been in the past couple months. You know what I mean? I think it's time to start uh, reinviting myself back into the world again. So I'm looking, I'll am i be talking to you about that here pretty soon. Yeah, dude. Uh, let me know, man. I yeah, might, um... I know. I was going to say, if you're down for international travel, um, I'm not working at it, but um, I, I am trying to get everything together to head out and check out the, uh, the Paris show in November. Okay. Um, a buddy of mine from Malaysia is flying out there with a whole group of people from Taiwan. Um, you know, really, really awesome artists, um, guys that have been very, you know, influential into the style of work that I like to do. And having been to the Paris show before, knowing that it's not the same thing, but it's basically the same thing, if that makes sense. It does. Um, you know, for tax and legal purposes, names have changed. But, um, you know, just getting out there and just getting out for a long weekend and going on vacation, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I might. It depends on what date it is, because I have, do have some plans to go out to, to visit a couple of friends in, uh, in Vegas. Um, I'll pretty much be staying at their house and I'm going to tattoo them while I'm out there and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, um, but that's only for a couple of days. Um, so, but yeah, it depends on the dates. I might, I might take you up on that, man. Yeah. I know my, my know, passport dude. is, my passport is still good. You just shoot me the dates and, and we'll go from there, dude. No, no problem. Yeah. I think it's the middle of November. Um, that's going on, but that's, it's going to be kind of tricky because I think it's the weekend right before Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, so it's going to be a little tricky just because two weeks after that, I've got the Puerto Rico show that I'm flying out for. So that's going to be, you know, a week of me in Puerto Rico. Um, but that's ironically awesome. enough, the guy that I was planning on meeting up with in Paris is also working at Puerto Rico. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. I Radical. got him a uh, spot in the booth with me this year. Um, Radical. and he's flying out from Malaysia like Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia on the exact opposite side of the world to work wow. on this show. Damn, dude. That's awesome. That's right? awesome, man. Like, yeah. Blows your mind, doesn't it? It does. It does. But of course, you know, the, the opposite side to that coin is that now I'm going to have to organize and make a trip out to Malaysia, you mm -hmm. know? So, but he, he might end up doing, you know, a little bit of a United States tour and, be out here for a month or so so you know just traveling around the u.s doing guest spots yeah radical 
Radical. Well, I mean, if you're going to travel halfway around the world, you might as well make the most of it, I guess. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's exciting, dude. What an adventure. Yeah. What a killer adventure. It's one thing I would absolutely love to do is just pick a spot in the world, like a region, maybe Europe, maybe Southeast Asia, maybe, maybe uh, South America. Um, and I would like to just go and just spend a couple of months, like two or three months, just like floating around, working at a show here, a show there, guest spot here, guest spot there, and just go and spend a few months on the road. Yeah. You know, you learn a lot about yourself when you travel, you learn a lot about yourself when you tattoo at these different shows, you, you build this network of artists that can literally, you know, really help push you through some difficult spots in your career, all just by getting out there and traveling a little bit more. So yeah. I, personally, I always recommend people travel more, but, you know, I understand that, you know, it's not always the best bet for some people. Well, yeah, there's so. a, there's like a means to an end sometimes, right? And the, the money is a very real thing. Right. Hey, let me ask you this. I started going through and silhouetting the snake shape. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just go through and like erase the scales and stuff like that. For a tattoo wise, they should be pretty like the negative lines that I'm going to create with the scales should be pretty um, thick. Don't you think? Yeah. In, in For order longevity's to show... sake, they, yeah, they yeah, should exactly. definitely be thick. Okay, cool. In fact, what I would do is I would put those, I would draw all your scales on a separate layer over top of the body. Uh -huh. And then, and then you can play with the transparency on that so that you can make them as opaque and light or as dark as you want just by turning the transparency up and down. With which layer? Which the with the silhouetted layer? So if you draw all of your scales, yeah, right on a separate layer in uh -huh. say white over top of the silhouette of the snake, uh -huh. you can then change the transparency on how vibrant and how opaque those scale lines are. That'll be a lot, a lot more time consuming, or a lot less time consuming than the other way. Yeah, for sure. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I didn't think about that. Look at that. See, like I told you, man, I keep I keep drawing them. Like I have a sketch on one layer right now. And uh, you know what I mean? The rest of it is like, yeah, the rest of it is all these little, let me see. It's all these little guys right here. Where the hell did it go? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I just have this layer. Right. Which I've been drawing on top of, and then I have that layer. There's nothing but like just sketchy lines, you know. So it's I treat it like tracing paper, just so I need to yeah. remember that there's like there's other layers and stuff like that too to play with. Yeah, I need to remember that. Need to focus in on that stuff, man. It's like a laser beam, like a freaking laser beam, like a freaking laser beam, man. Well, um. Yeah. I think I have a pretty big day today, dude. I think I might dude. be cutting it a little short. Yeah. Yeah. Right so, on, man. Uh, I appreciate you coming in and helping out when Lauren has to uh, do her travels. Hey, not a problem um, at all. Not yeah. For all you guys, all. for all you guys tuning in, make sure and check it out. She'll probably be posting some pictures of her at the Mecca, <laughs> yes. which is hi which is hyper, hyper, uh, hyper, hyperspace. hyperspace studios. Yeah. I was definitely forgetting there for a second, <laughs> but uh yeah, man. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate you. You're very welcome, sir. It's been my cool. pleasure and my honor as always. All right, dude. I will uh, talk to you guys soon. You guys have a good Tuesday. Remember, um... <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, remember to be kind to each other. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Awesome, bud. Take care, yeah. man. See have a later. great day. Mm -hmm.